Hope Kids, Pastor Tony here. It's another Sunday, so that means another edition of Hope Kids at Home. Uh, but today's not any other ordinary Sunday. Today is Easter. In fact, one of the most important Sundays that we can celebrate as a church and as Jesus followers because of what happened on this day thousands of years ago. Now, well, how we've been doing church has been different. I'm here in Hope Kids by myself. You've been worshiping at home with your families, but that doesn't mean we can't have an awesome time together today celebrating that Jesus has died and rose again. And so we have an awesome event called Easter Jam for you. Now here's the thing about Easter Jam. Easter Jam is an event for the entire family. So if you're a teenager, Easter Jam is for you. If you're in preschool, Easter Jam is for you. And if you're a parent or adult, Easter Jam is for you. Now the only way to make Easter Jam fun is to participate. So everyone's gonna have a role in today's event. Now look around the room. Do you have everyone in your family with you? If not, pause this video, go grab them, and we'll see you in three, two, one. Easter, a time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? All right, hear me out. There are two kinds of people in this world. The first kind absolutely love these. Do you guys know what these are? These are peeps. These are marshmallow candies that always come around at Easter. Some of, or some of you love these things. There's others like myself who are not fans of peeps. So let me see who likes Peeps in your household. If you like Peeps, go ahead and raise your hand or give me a thumbs up. All right, if you're like me and not a fan of Peeps, raise your hand or give me a thumbs down. Awesome, now whether or not you love Peeps, you're going to love this next game. So here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need some Peeps and you're gonna need some toothpicks. Now, if you don't have Peeps, giant marshmallows work as well, but either way, you're gonna need one of those for this game. This game is called Peep Jousting. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna divide your family into two teams. Team A, Team B, Team One, Team Two. Uh, however creative you wanna name your team, give yourself a team name and then give each team a Peep. And then go ahead and name your, your, your Peep who's gonna go into the battle. All right, so come up with a creative name, and even if you wanna go even more creative with your peep, go ahead and grab a Sharpie, and you guys can draw on your peep as well. You can put a little mustache on them, draw a hat, draw a tie, however you wanna draw, or whatever you wanna decorate your peep, go ahead and do that right now. After you're done decorating your peep, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your toothpick, and you're gonna stick it into the middle of your peep, just like this. Now this toothpick could be a number of different things. It could be a sword, it could be a joust, it could be a lightsaber. It all depends on how competitive your family is. Now once you have your peeps ready to go, put them on a microwavable plate. And here's the thing, no social distancing allowed for these peeps. Keep them close because you want the toothpicks to be able to touch the other peep as they expand in the microwave. So keep them close and make sure that toothpick is facing the opposite peep, all right? Once you put your peeps on the, on the plate, put that plate inside the microwave, set your timer for 45 seconds. But keep an eye on what's happening inside because you're not gonna use that entire time. And parents, trust me, you're gonna wanna end it before all 45 seconds is up. So set the timer for 45 seconds. Uh, get your peeps ready to go, press go, and we'll see who is the ultimate winner of Peep Jout. So I'll see you guys after your battle.
All right, I don't know about you, but I had a lot of fun with that. Here's how my peeps turned out. I'm sure yours look very similar to mine. Now here's what I want, uh, here's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to take a picture of the winning team and I want us, or we wanna see who the winner is out of your family. So go ahead and take a picture, tag us at HopeKidsLV or hashtag HopeKidsLV so that way we can celebrate with the winner of your family as well. Now put away your peeps and we're gonna go on to our second game of Easter Jam. Here's what I need you guys to do. I need you guys to grab a laundry basket and a bunch of socks. Doesn't matter if they are clean, if they're dirty, if you just took them off your feet, but they need to be a match. So go and grab as many socks as you can. Push pause on this video and I'll see you guys when you come back. All right, got your laundry basket and your socks. Here's what you need to do. First, you need to choose two people to play in this game and two people to be scorekeepers. Next, I need you to put your socks on one end of the room and put your laundry basket on the opposite side. Players are gonna go to where the piles of socks are. When I say go, you're going to find a sock and then you have to dig around the other socks and find the matching one. You're gonna ball them up into a ball or an Easter egg and you're gonna toss them underhand into the basket. The player with the most socks uh, thrown into the basket by the end of the timer is going to be the winner. All right, so scorekeepers, make sure you guys are keeping track of the points. And when I say go, you guys will begin. All right, is everybody ready? Great. Well, it's time for the Easter egg throwdown. Get ready to throw in three, two, one, go. Everyone come back over here. Now, who is the ultimate winner of the Easter egg throwdown? Again, parents, take a picture of the winning team, tag us at HopeKidsLV or hashtag HopeKidsLV so we can celebrate with the winners. And winners, you guys get a very special prize for this game. Socks! No, I'm just kidding. Maybe it's your peeps from earlier. No, that wouldn't be a good prize either. But maybe, maybe the winning team can come up with something fun that they can do for their prize. Well, like I said, Easter's a fun day to celebrate, even though we're celebrating differently. Uh, but there's a lot of things that can make this day a happy day. Uh, but before we dive into our story and talk about truly why is Easter so important, there's one more important thing that I want you guys to do as a family. I know Easter's a day, an awesome day to connect with friends and family. So I wanna give you guys that opportunity to be able to do that right now. So you guys are gonna have a couple of different options that's gonna come up on the screen. Choose one of the options and make sure you guys connect with your peeps during this time. Pause this video and I'll see you guys when you're done. All right, so like I said, Easter is a happy day. And not just because peep jousting or Easter egg throwdown or chocolate bunnies. Don't get me wrong, those are all fun, but that's not what makes Easter, Easter. It's not what, it's not what makes it the special day that it is. In fact, Easter is special and important because of something significant that happened thousands of years ago with Jesus. It was, a, it was an event that changed the world forever, but yet its message is so simple. In fact, it's so simple that it could be told through a pile of laundry. Go and check it out. In the beginning, God created everything. 
He formed people in his very own image. But then, we turned away from God. Sin entered the world, like a dark stain. Still, God loved us so deeply that he made a plan to rescue us. At just the right moment, God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live among us. Jesus healed hearts and minds and bodies. Thousands gathered to hear him teach. Instead of giving lots of new rules, Jesus turned things upside down by making it simple. Love God, love others. After three years of traveling and teaching, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Huge crowds gathered to welcome him. But while the crowds cheered for Jesus, the religious leaders made plans to arrest him. He was turning their world upside down, and they wanted him gone. As Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends, he told them that he would be leaving, but would return. His friends didn't understand. That night, one of Jesus' followers, Judas, led soldiers to arrest him. The religious leaders gave Jesus a fake trial and then sent him to Pilate, the Roman governor, who could have him killed. Pilate found Jesus had broken no law and tried to release him. But a mob called for Jesus to be killed. Pilate gave in and handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers. Jesus was forced to carry the heavy beams of his own wooden cross. On a hill called Golgotha, the soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the rough wood. The soldiers and people who passed by laughed and mocked him. But from the cross, Jesus asked God to forgive them. Finally, Jesus called out, it is finished. Then he died. The earth shook. Rocks split open. Even the soldiers cried, surely he was the son of God. One of Jesus' followers took his body and placed it in a tomb cut from the rock. A huge stone blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends were devastated. They had believed that Jesus was the one God promised, the one who would rescue them, but now he was gone. Their whole world had turned upside down. Jesus' friends stayed hidden in fear for three days. But early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, a close friend of Jesus, hurried to the tomb. She planned to anoint Jesus' body with special spices. As Mary neared the tomb, she saw the stone had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. Mary turned to see a man standing near. She didn't recognize him until he said, Mary, it was Jesus, alive. Jesus told her, do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Jesus, God's Son, became like us to lay down his life. Through God's power, he defeated death for all of us, and sin was washed away. One day, he's promised to return, so we can live with him forever. The Easter story is amazing. And I've been a Jesus follower for almost my entire life. I made the decision to follow Jesus as a kid. And every time I hear about how much God loves me, it amazes me every single time. The fact that God the Father sent his son into the world who lived a perfect life and ended up dying on the cross for our sin, our punishment that we deserve. It just makes me worship God in a whole new way each time. The fact that death could not even keep Jesus down means that Jesus is bigger than anything and everything that we go through. There is not one problem bigger than Jesus. There is not one thing that ultimately is bigger than who Jesus is. 
And because of that, we can trust God no matter what, because He is alive. In fact, we can fill in this statement right here as I can dot 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 or fill in the blank because Jesus is alive. I can love others because Jesus is alive. I can trust God no matter what because Jesus is alive. I don't have to worry or be anxious because Jesus is alive. I can have a relationship with God again because Jesus is alive. So here's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys as a family to talk about what does it mean to fill in that blank. I can have whatever that is because Jesus is alive. So we're gonna put that graphic up on the screen. I want you guys to pause this video and I want you guys to talk about that. What does that mean for you? Knowing that Jesus came into this world, conquered death and is alive, how does that change your life? Spend a few moments talking about that as a family and I'll see you guys when you are done. Awesome. I love conversations like these. Remembering what God has done in the past helps me in my relationship with him right now. And I hope that's true for you today. I hope that this truth of God loving you so much that he didn't want our sin to be in the way of a relationship with him, that he sent Jesus in the world to die for us, to die for the punishment, the consequence for our sin that separated us from a relationship with God. That not even death could keep Jesus down. That he overcame and conquered death through God's power. And that power is the same power that God has for us through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's an amazing event and it's the reason why Easter is such a happy day that we can celebrate. Not that just Jesus died, but he rose again. And he is the risen King and he is alive. So one more challenge for you guys as a family. What I want you guys to do right now is I want you guys to take a family Easter picture. What This could be inside your house, this could be outside, this could be in your PJs or all dressed up. Well, however it looks like for your family on this day, I want you guys to take a family picture. And then again, tag us at HopeKidsLV or hashtag HopeKidsLV so we can see you and your family celebrating that Jesus is alive. Well, I don't think there's a better time than now just uh, than to celebrate and to praise God for who he is and how much he loves us. And ultimately, that Easter is such a happy day. Celebrate Jesus is alive 